A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high or silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Mystery Rider of the Plains, the unknown hero of the greatest legend of the West. His face was masked. No one could guess the inspiration for his life and self-sacrifice. But everyone paid tribute to his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness. Here was a champion of right against might, the symbol of American justice and American democracy, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> In town, men gathered in the cafe each evening. From time to time, a small back room was used by those who sought privacy for their low-voiced conferences. In the back room of the cafe, Baldy Hanover, the notorious outlaw, sat with two of his cronies when they heard a significant knock on the private entrance. Shit tight, you two. It might be Cleveland, it might not be. I got my guns ready just in case. Jake... You open that door. Right. What do you want? Holy Hanover. Stop all this fiddling around and let me in to see him. All right, Cleve, come in. Shut that door, Jake. Yeah, it'll be a sight easier to see the President of the United States than you, Hanover. Now, what do you want of me, anyhow? What's the idea of all this foolishness? Sit there, Cleve. I suppose you start over and speak in a more respecting way. Respecting? Of you? Why, you stage right. I said respecting! If you wasn't ready to take orders from me, you wouldn't be here. All right, then. You'll win. Show your hand. Only tell me why you had to be marched to the side of the building by the barkeep and then made to hand over my gun. Jake, you got your gun on you? Nope. The only guns in this party are held by me and my part lefty there. You ain't no better than Jake Smith, Cleve. What's more, I ain't yet explained why I wanted you two gunslingers here. If you don't like my play, you can leave and get your guns. If you decide to go in with me, you'll get your guns and... Hear more plans. Been with you already. Didn't ride all the way from the Trigger Bend country for the fresh air I'd get. Need cash? Bad enough to take orders from you to get it. <laughs> Good. The law must be real lax around here. If you're allowed to hang your hat. Yeah. I, uh, I got friends here, Cleve. What's your scheme? Get to the point so as I can start drinking to it. The point ain't far from here. Have you ever heard of the Lone Ranger? Well, I should hope to say so. Good. That saves explaining. Now then, Lefty, you tell Cleve your side of it. Lefty works in the Western Union office. 
You savvy? Yeah. I see all the messages that goes to the wires from my office. So? Well, uh, a few days ago, an old settler here came into my office. Her name's Maggie something or other, but she's called Mustang Mag. Hmm. She come in and hammered on the counter with a fist that looked as hard as any man's I ever seen. I'll be there when I get there. Take it easy. I've got to have some service, and quick. All your horses, can't you? Dead rats are lefty. This here's an important message, and it's to get sent to Washington, D.C. I rode a powerful long ways to get here, and you step lively. All right, all right. I'm coming. Now, where's the message, and who's it for? There's a name and address. I hope you can read. Yeah. You mean th this man? That's what it says, ain't it? Now, you get that do jigger clicking. But there ain't no name signed to this. You put them two letters on the bottom. That's all you got to do. The gent that gets the message will know what it means. Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. I'll tend to it pronto, right away. Well, you can tell that the message was a mighty important one by the way I told you I acted. What was the message? It said that uh, the man that sent it was holding important papers that he couldn't deliver. He was laid up with bad wounds. I'll take over now, Lefty. Cleve, the man that sent the message, was the Lone Ranger. And he's in bed at Mustang Mag's ranch, hovering between life and death with bullet wounds. The Lone Ranger is? Just so. So we're going to get the paper he has. It's mighty important and worth plenty to the government. Once we get our hands on that paper, we can tell Uncle Sam where to get off at. We can get a full pardon for all that's chalked up against us. Yeah. You sure of that, Baldy? I'm dead sure. That's why I sent for you. I thought you'd be interested in helping us. Not only me. I know of plenty of others with a price on their heads that'd be willing to do the same. We'll just ride up there and take it. If we got to shoot, we'll shoot. But, uh, what about the, uh, cash you said we could get? Just how much cash do you figure folks would raise if they had to do it to ransom off the Lone Ranger? Uh, plenty. Thousands. More than that. <laughs> yeah. Now, look, we'll take him with us, savvy? No good, Baldy. Why no good? Well, that's been tried before. Shucks, we wouldn't have a chance of capturing the Lone Ranger. Well, that's been tried and tried. But it ain't been going out right. Now, the way I got things planned, it'll be a cinch. Uh, has the uh, government sent a reply to that message? Nope. Not by telegraph, anyhow. If they do, I'll know about it. Well, it might be worth talking over. No harm in planning, anyway. As I said... I know a lot of good gunslingers that I can get to help us out. Keep talking. I think I heard something move outside the door. Sure, I can get a lot of gunslingers. Men that'll fall right into line with us. Good men. No, wait. So you've been snooping, eh, bartender? Come in here. No, wait. Listen. Hold on. Listen outside the door, huh? What about it, bartender? All right. I was listening. I heard what you said. Uh, you admit it, eh? I admit it. And you ain't going to do it. What? I've been here a good many years. I know enough to keep my mouth and my eyes shut to plenty of things that went on. But this here is different. Yeah. So what do you figure on doing? Baldy, you can't move again, the Lone Ranger. You can't do it. Who will stop me? Every man jack in town. Why, there ain't a man or boy here that wouldn't start gunfighting to stop such a scheme as you're talking about. Well, they know about it if you don't tell them. I will tell them. I had my gun now. You Alec. don't need a cleave. I got mine. Jake, shut that door. Baldy, you don't dast. Don't I? We'll see about that. You acted mighty careless just now, bartender. Too careless. It's going to mean that you'll have to be fixed so she ain't able to talk. No, no, listen to me, Baldy. Don't be a fool. I don't aim to be. You can't fight every man in town. They'll learn your plan somehow. Shut up. If you got any last words, think them. I won't be talking. Hey, he's going for the window. Shoot him. Get that door open. You hit him. He's running. He's still moving, that crazy fool. Missed again. Hey, the door to the bar. We gotta shove off fast. Why didn't you let me do some shooting? You let that critter get away. I hit him. You heard him squeal. Yeah, you didn't drop him, though. What's going on there? Open this door. Come on. Get out and get away. Horses right in the back. Come up there. We'll shoot the door down. What's going on inside there? What's the shooting? None of your business. Stay on your side of the door or stop, lead. That means keep up. 
Where the boys and horses? Where are we riding to? Uh, mount up. Ride with me toward the north. First thing is to get away from here. Get up, get up, get up, get up. The horses leaped in pain and fear from the cruelly driven spurs. The four plotters raced from the cafe. Above the clatter of hoofs, Baldy cried out. Leave. You said you can line up more men. Sure I can, but not enough to beat the whole town. Then get what men you can. I know where to get what's needed to clean up the town if we get it. Who will you get? Indians. A couple of hundred of them. I'll show you that while Baldy Hanover starts a thing, he finishes it. Stay mad. Must stay mad. That's you, Missouri? No, ma'am. It ain't Missouri. It's me. I'm barkeep in the cafe. What you want here with all this rumpus? I've got a sick man inside this house. Now, scared. Get going. Wait. I, I got a message. It's a Baldy Hanover bunch. They're a coming. Who? Worst pack outlaws this side of jail. They're scheming for the paper the Lone Ranger has. Lefty is in with them. Who's Lefty? The telegraph man. Why, that double crossing two They've read off. Shot me. They're coming back. There are plenty of men. They'll capture the Lone Ranger. Black friend, they will. But they will, Mag. They'll have enough men to do it. Where in chunk it is, Missouri? Why ain't that spavin galoot around when he can be of use? You've got to tell everyone that you need him, Mag. Tell the men to get here. Get here as soon as they can. What's the matter with you? You hurt? Nicked by a slug, not bad. Take enough to worry about. I'll get a horse and ride back to town with you. I'll show them pole cats a reception when they come here. I'll make it so hot for them they'll think they moved into a furnace. My sakes. Look. Huh? Oh, here. Tonto. Tonto, come quick. My sakes, friend, you get yourself back into bed. Meg. In biting fever and a relapse by getting up when you're weak as a kitten. What matter? You call Tonto. Your friend is out of his bunk. No, oh, no, you get back. Let Tonto help. No. Yeah, me. Town. Trash, you don't waste what strength you do have left in talking. Hold him on the other side, Tonto. Uh. He's back into the bunk. Uh. Oh, my stars, this is an awful reckless thing he's done. I'd like to set him back no end. Mm, Tonto, fix him. Stretch him out here. Uh. Oh, what in thunderation did you try to tell me? Write it out, partner, if you can. I must go. Go? Where'd you figure on going? But you ain't leaving this here house. That's why him get up? A bartender from town was telling about the Baldy Hanover pack. What name? Baldy Hanover. You know him? Oh, him plenty bad. Uh, barkeep, get back outside and shut that door. Go on, tell the men in town what you told me. Yes, Mag. No. Uh, get going now. You know Hanover, Tonto? Oh, uh, me know him. Well, don't matter anyhow. The barkeep will get all the men in town to come here if they're needed. Baldy had a notion to kidnap the Lone Ranger. Maybe that's why a friend want to leave. Not right. He's nodding. But why'd you want to leave here? The men in town were plenty to stand off a handful of thieving polecats. Uh, you not know him. What don't I know? Baldy got plenty friends. Oh, there can't be more than a dozen men to work with him. Mm, there are more. More than a dozen? Uh. Well, there'll be 50 men from town. That ought to be plenty. Mm, that's not enough. You mean to say Baldy can get more than 50 men to come here? That's right. I don't believe it. Baldy, him quarter breed. Quarter breed? Him part Indian, part Apache. Him get Indian. Uh, you, you mean he can get a tribe of savages to help him? That's right. Here, here, get back there. Town wiped out. Can't stay. Well, you're going to stay. And if the whole town has to be wiped out in your defense, I can't think of no way them men would sooner die. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. One horse raced like mad through the night. Old Missouri, the close friend of Mustang Mag, hurried to the house where the Lone Ranger was recovering from his wounds. Well, whoa there! Mag! Mag, are you at home? You stand over here? Missouri, land sakes, it's high time you got here. I was in town. The barkeep had news. Oh, he got there, huh? Then you know about the bounty Hanover gang. Yeah, I didn't wait for no details. I come here fast. Missouri, listen. Step off in the porch so I can talk to you. Mag, them outlaws won't have a chance. Missouri, we're in trouble up to the neck and getting deeper. Huh? Baldy Hanover has ideas of stealing the paper that belongs to the government and stealing the Lone Ranger at the same time. What's a government paper? It tells all about plans of renegade armies over the border. The Lone Ranger was supposed to turn it over to Colonel Blake, but he was shot before he could do it. So now what? I sent a message to Washington explaining about that paper. Lefty in the telegraph office told Baldy Hanover, and Baldy's out to make trouble. Shucks! The narration he won't get far. Yeah, that's what I thought at first. Of course he won't. Every man in town will be here and... Huh? At first? At first. What do you mean by that? The Lone Ranger is still determined to get away from this house. Baldy has a whole band of Apache engines to work with him. The men that fight here will have more than they can handle. Golly. But we can't let the Lone Ranger leave. He done so once and near brought on his death. He's got to stay here. It's again his will. What's Tonto say? Oh, poor Injun. He's sick with worry. He figured to leave the Lone Ranger here? Tonto says he can't be moved. He just can't. That's all there is to it. That settles it, then. Tonto's up again an injury that he can't handle. He's real worried about his friend. Meg, do you mean to say the Lone Ranger mayn't get well? Well... Tonto says he should have showed signs for better before now. If, if what? If the things Tonto was doing was helping him. Oh, Missouri, why ain't there some real good doctors around here? Gosh, I, I don't know. Tonto was telling me that this are much needed. A surgeon, for one thing. One that knows more about treating wounds than Tonto does. Medicines to give him back his strength and things to fight the infection and the fever. Mag, them things is needed, sure enough. But we ain't got them. I know we ain't. A talking of them ain't finding a way to lick the redskins. I know it ain't. Mag, I... Quiet. Look into the window there. Huh? Look at Tonto. There he is on his knees beside the Lone Ranger's bed. Shakes alive. Take a look at that, Missouri. And see something the good Lord may never let you see again. An engine praying to his creator. And it won't only be the life of the Lone Ranger he'll be asking for. If Lone Ranger, not given strength to leave, please spare life of all men from town. Redskins are sure working themselves up to the war path. Oh, if drums and that chanting hits me too, makes me ready to fight. <laughs> we'll show them settlers what happens when they try to stop us. Calm yourself, Paul. Yes, the engine blowed in. Now listen to me. What is it? How soon do you think the Redskins will be ready to start? The longer we wait, the better. The Lone Ranger may leave Mag's place. No, he won't. If he was able to leave, he wouldn't have had her send that telegram. Yeah, that's so. Leave those cutters dance and sing. Let him go till noon. Let him go all night and all morning. I knew they'll be raring to fight. Yeah, uh, wasted time. No such thing. They got to get bored and mad before they'll tackle the settlers. How many would you say are here? Two, three hundred. Okay. Enough. I'll warrant that, Lefty. Enough. More than enough to wipe out every one that's in our way. By noon tomorrow, we'll be making our attack. By sunset at the latest, we'll have the Lone Ranger. Yeah! <laughs> While the Indians shouted and danced with wild leaps about their council fires, 
the townsmen brought their weapons to Mustang Mags. As each group of pioneers arrived in the course of the night, Tonto met the men and told them the unpleasant news. Apache and plenty savage Indian come without law. Without exception, the men reacted in the same way. We're here to stick. Tonto told the men that it was the Lone Ranger's desire to have no lives lost. He wanted Missouri and me to leave him too. That's just like him. He wanted to be left here alone. To die? That's right. I'll be captured with death a sure thing. We're here to stick. Look, there's Apache's coming. The thing to do is to make a stand inside the house. Yeah, that's how I figured it. I got the house fixed as best I could do. The furniture is moved back. Some of us can take fire and posts in the barn. That's a good idea. Some on the second floor of the house. Yeah, uh, poke some holes in the roof if you want. Just big enough to stick a rifle through. Yeah, the more points of fire we have, the better. We'll go inside and get organized. No telling how soon the attack will start. It won't be long. I can promise you that. The sun rose with about 50 men in place in Mustang Mag's house and barn. The Lone Ranger, his face drawn by weakness and saddened by the sight of so many friends who stood ready to lay down their lives in his defense, was on a bunk in the center of the house, barricaded by upturned tables and trunks. I've got plenty of strong coffee for you boys. Just yell out when you want some. We will, Mag. I'll go outside and stand watch so Stano can come in and get a mite of rest. Oh, uh, Missouri. Huh? Tell Tonto that the Lone Ranger has a scheme. Yeah? I can see it. I can see it in the way he's been studying the layout of the room. He figures to get to his feet and walk out and give himself up when the attack comes. That'll stop the fighting. He can't do that. He'll try. Tell Tonto. Guys, I sure will. <laughs> The hours dragged by to nine o'clock, then ten. They may not come till after dark. I can't tell. Likely to show up any time. Can't let down watching. Eleven o'clock, then noon, when the sun was highest and hottest. They're coming! They're coming! Get ready to fight! I see them! Look yonder! Yeah, here's one to start them thinking. Get him riding down here. Give it to him, boys. Open fire and keep firing. The red savages raced in, then formed a large circle surrounding the house and barn. They rode constantly nearer to the house, getting close enough to take up their bows and arrows that were tipped with flame. Don't let them use fires. That'll be our finish. Keep the guns barking, boys. Those Indians are handy with their guns. They're coming close every time. Oh, no, my arm. You ain't hit back, Missouri. It's just a scratch. I've seen it. Meg, you've been hit yourself. Oh, I know it. Meg, you're wounded. You're shooting. Never mind my shoulder. Pass me another shoot now, and I'll have a hand at this. I just wish them ornery leaders would show their ugly faces. There's one red skin out of the fight. While the fighting was at a peak, the Lone Ranger tried feebly to rise against the strength of Tonto. Go the way, Tonto. Men dying. No, no, you stay here. Oh. Look there! Fire! Get, get water! Get water on that fire before it gets going! That fire's out! They're Come close on. enough to use the arrows now. Some of you get up on the roof. Get wet rags and pails of water up there. Here's water. Fire arrow just came through this window. Fight that fire. If the fire gets started, we're late. Drop the nearest Indians. Get them before they send the fire arrows. The house was filled with reeking powder smoke, and water was slopped all over the floor. A score of the brave men had fallen with wounds and others still fought on. It had become a losing fight. The arrows tipped with flame were falling regularly on the roof and outside the house. Only a question of minutes and the water would be gone. Then fire would end the fight. Tonto raced toward the door. No mean to say. Open door. Let Silver in. No, don't do it. Don't let Silver in here. Him one horse. But Tonto, he'll grab that horse. He'll only have to whisper and Silver take him out of here into the hands of the enemy. Not only way. Lone Ranger say no other way now. Then he knows we ain't a chance. Oh, Tonto. Tonto. 
still a man a man here that wants his life to be spared by the Lone Ranger surrender. Me open door. Meg! Meg, I hear the bugle. Oh, you're hearing things, Missouri. I am, huh? I hear the bugle. Oh, bugle! Hey, Pete, Missouri, look over there! and a large body of troops burst into view with guns firing. The Indians knew better than to face those hard-riding soldiers. They broke, fled, and were pursued. The men inside the house raced into the open to watch the thrilling spectacle of flags and banners flying above the riders' heads. Colonel Blake himself rode to the house, dismounted, and stepped inside. I'm here to see the Lone Ranger. Uh, Oh, you know about him? There's a whole army know where he is. None of my men know he's here. I received confidential orders from headquarters. My name is Colonel Blake. Oh, Colonel Blake. Doggone it, Colonel. You sure saved our necks. Well, I'm glad we arrived in time. The Indians will be driven back where they belong. Coming up in the rear as we did, we saw the men who incited them. Those men will be captured. Great. I hope the orange... Oh, sorry. Huh? Oh, oh, all right. I'll take the report the Lone Ranger has for me. Now, my men will be camped close by. And the signal of smoke will bring whatever help is needed. That sure will be a help, Colonel. It sure will. I have all manner of medical supplies and one of the best surgeons in the Army in my detachment. These are all at your disposal. (laughs) Not not good. Here, here, Indian. Get on your feet. I don't blame Tonto for feeling that grateful to you, sir. He's been at his wit's end trying to doctor his friend. Tonto, eh? Well, stand up, trusty scout. We're going to save the Lone Ranger for you. For all of us. And this... This first time... First time... Tonto... Shed a tear. Tonto. Never mind. Them tears is something to be proud of. God bless you. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger, Incorporated. 